it's Alice and today we are gonna do the third part of my bookshelf tour finally taking a look at the shelf right here all right so we're back at it with the slightly awkward angle and on these shelves I basically just have an assortment of a little bit of everything on this particular shelf though I'm not actually using the very bottom shelf for books I'm using it for like just admin stuff and papers, like things you just accumulate when you're an adult for some reason and that you need. The bottom shelf is for that, but the rest of the shelves are filled with books. These shelves really are just a mishmash of everything. And I have unread books, I have read books, all kinds of things. And on the top here, the very top shelf, I have some of my taller paperbacks because this is where they fit, so this is where I put them. A lot of these actually have very beautiful covers, like this one. This has this beautiful swan cover that I really like. We have The Mercies, which I still haven't read, I really need to read. This book is actually set in Norway and <laughs> everyone tells me I should read it and I really should. And a cool thing about this cover is that this is like traditional Norwegian rose painting. So it's really cool that even though this isn't written by a Norwegian author, they have like traditional Norwegian stuff on the cover. We also have my favorite book that I've read by Isabel Allende. This is A Long Petal of the Sea. It has like a slightly shiny cover and it's really beautiful. This is a great like book where you follow the same people throughout their entire lives and it really made me want to read more by this author and I'm definitely going to. Then we have The Starless Sea which is like a booktube favorite. I actually haven't read this yet. I'm going to. It's a little bit chunky though so it might take me a while. This is another book that I absolutely loved. This is Ask Again Yes. If you like Little Fires Everywhere, I would really recommend this. They're sort of in the same style, in the same vein. We have The Maidens, which is like a dark academia book. Really love this cover. I liked the book, but I didn't love it. Then we have some books by Sally Rooney, one of which I've read, Normal People. I love this one, but I haven't read any of her other work because I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. But I do have this one, and I'm going to give it a go at some point. Then we have this book which I haven't read, we have this which has an excellent, excellent cover and an excellent title. I really think this is a well-designed book and I've read it and it's really good. We have another beautiful book, we have Lonely Castle in the Mirror. I've read this, really enjoyed it, but it was a little bit more middle grade than I had thought. And then we have this book which is obviously beautiful because it has fall on the cover, which is my favorite season. Next to that, we have this stack of books and I've actually read a lot of these and I love a lot of them. At the top here, we have The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which is an excellent, like, weird historical fiction crime type book. It's about this guy who's stuck in a time loop basically and it's like a roller coaster of a book and it's really really good. Under that we have one of my favorite covers. This is The Story of a Goat. I still haven't read this one but I really want to and I just love the book design. Then we have a memoir. This is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. One of my favorite memoirs that I've ever read. We also have a Norwegian classic. This is Die Deux de Sjern. This isn't available in English, unfortunately, but it's a very interesting and pretty scary, like, story. And I love this cover as well. There's something about, like, hands in water that just... I just love. It's kind of creepy, but also beautiful. The House on Mango Street is an excellent YA classic that I would really recommend. Then we have this book, which I haven't read. We have... So You Want to Talk About Race, which is an excellent introductory book to this topic. Then we have some of my favorite nonfiction. We have The Lost City of Zed by David Gran, an excellent story about the Amazon and the look for The Lost City of Zed. This, though, might be my absolute favorite nonfiction book. This is the book that, like, got me into nonfiction, and because of that, I'm always gonna love it. This is a history book about the first circumnavigation of the globe in the 16th century, I think. 
somewhere around there and it's so much fun. If you like adventure, this is amazing. And I just remember when I went into this, I was a little bit apprehensive because I didn't think I liked nonfiction. And then I read this one and it opened so many like doors, windows, all kinds of things for me. And now I love reading nonfiction and I feel like this book is to thank for that. Then we have this book, which I've had for ages and I haven't read, but I really want to show you this book at the bottom here. This is The Unseen World by Liz Moore. I feel like this book is so underrated. It's very difficult to explain, but it's so, so good. And there's like an extra thing going on in here. It's a story about a daughter and her father, but there's also something else like technology stuff going on. I can't tell you about it without spoiling it, but I would really, really recommend this book. Lastly on the shelf, we have two books by Zora Neale Hurston, which should really be next to each other, but for some reason they're not. These are beautiful editions of her works. I've read this one, but I haven't read this one yet and I really need to. Then we have this book, which I've read and I didn't love, but I've kept it and I can't get rid of it because I just think the cover is so, so beautiful that I just keep it because of the beautiful cover. It's also quite a thin book, so it doesn't take up too much space. That's how I justify that decision to myself. Then we have What the Wind Knows, which is a book I haven't read. And then we have this book, which I really should talk about more. This is a short story collection, and it's actually one of my favorite short story collections that I've read. It's really, really good. On the second shelf, we have this stack of books. On top here, we have this classic by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which I've read, and I really like this cover design as well. I think it's really cool. Then we have this book, which to be honest, I don't remember what this book is about. I just remember that I want to read it, and the cover is beautiful. Beneath that, though, we have my lovely Phryne Fisher collection. This is, I think, about half of the series. I have read, like, I think four or five books in the series, and I want to read all of them, but I have about ten of them, so I don't need to get any more before I've, like, gone through these ones. This is one of my favorite cozy mystery series. We follow Phryne Fisher, who is a private detective living in 1920s Australia. She's a very fiery, fantastic woman, and it's so much fun to read about her. I also love these covers. I think they're really cool. Especially love this one because it has like fall on it, and I just really like the design. It's kind of like vintage looking, but still really cool. If you like cozy mysteries and historical fiction though, I would really recommend the series if you haven't read it. The first book is the first one that I showed you, Cocaine Blues. Next to that, we have a couple of books by Shia Lagua, which I haven't read. We have some translated books, which I guess I'll show you because the covers are beautiful. There are loads of these. I think there are like five or six. I only have two. I did have some more of them, but I got rid of them because I didn't like them that much, but I've kept these two. Next to that, we have the most disgusting book that I have ever read, but I mean that in the best way possible. This is Perfume by Patrick Susskind. It's also a classic at this point, I think, maybe like a modern classic. It's historical fiction and it's about this dude who can smell everything, basically, and it's really weird, but it's very, very good. Then we have a book I haven't read. We have Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. Really need to read this and I really want to get into Toni Morrison's work, so I need to just get started on that. Then we have Sweet Bean Paste, which if you've been on this channel before, you will probably have seen this. This is one of my favorite, like, sweet stories. It's one of my favorite translated stories. It's translated from Japanese. It's absolutely lovely and I would recommend it to everyone. We really just have a lot of different stuff on these shelves. We have <laughs> I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. This is one of my favorite, favorite memoirs. I would really recommend it. I think everyone should read it. We have Homo Deus by Yuval Noah Harari, which I should really put with the other books that I have by him, but for some reason it's here. We have The Good People by Hannah Kent, which is beautiful. It has this like shiny cover. This is a historical fiction novel. It's really, really good. We have one of my favorite books, Call Me By Your Name by Andrea Ossiman. An intense but 
beautiful, beautiful story. I also actually have the follow-up, Find Me, but I haven't read it and I'm a little bit nervous about it because I've heard kind of mixed things, but apparently this follows, I guess, what happens after Call Me By Your Name, which I am interested in, so one day I will read that. Then I've got a book that I keep telling myself that I need to read. This is a Greek mythology retelling that I just, you know, haven't gotten around to. We have The Witches of New York, and then we basically have a bunch of middle grade, and then one book by Elif Shafak, which is just there for some reason. I quite enjoy reading middle grade every now and then, and the thing that gets me about middle grade is that the covers are so beautiful. Like, I just love middle grade book design. It's just so beautiful. I love this kind of covers and I just can't help but buy them because look at them. They're so beautiful. Moving down, we have more of just a little bit of everything. We have Factfulness, if I can get it out. <laughs> This is a nonfiction book that is very, very high on my TBR. I think I'm gonna love it, and it's one of the reasons I'm putting it off, because I'm like saving it for a rainy day, which I really should stop doing, because I always just end up reading the books, and then I regret not reading them sooner. The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware is one of my favorite books by Ruth Ware, actually. I think this has an amazing, amazing setting, and it's really atmospheric, and... Yeah, my favorite Ruth Ware, probably. Then we have The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson, which I really enjoyed. We have some historical fiction. We have Washington Black by Essie Adugin. I love this cover. I think it's so, so pretty. Like, this is my kind of aesthetic to a T. I also now see that I've hidden a book in the back here, which I'll show you in a minute. But we also have The Confessions by Jesse Burton. This has a really cool cover because it has like a keyhole in the front, is that what you call it? Yeah, and you can see like the building through. I love when publishers do these kinds of things and just the design of this is beautiful. I haven't read this yet though, but I'm going to. We have notes on a nervous planet and then we have some books by Banana Yoshimoto and the book in the back is also by this author. This shelf just got a little bit full and I needed to hide a book in the back just for space, so that's why that's there. This particular book, Kitchen, is actually one of my favorite books that I've read by Banana Yoshimoto. It's a beautiful book about grief and trying to come to terms with it. I really need to read the rest of her books that I have as well, and I'm going to at some point. So there's one in the back, there's this one, then there's Kitchen. And then we have this random Norwegian crime book that I haven't read yet. I just realized I actually have another book by Banana Yoshimoto here. So I have this one, two here, and then one in the back, apparently. Then we have this nonfiction book in Norwegian that's really, really good. We have the Nakano Thrift Shop, which has an excellent pink cover. And then we have Queenie, which also has an excellent pink cover. Queen is a book that I didn't think I would like, and then I read it, and I ended up loving it. It's really, really good, and this cover is also beautiful. The Mars Room is a book I haven't read yet. We have A Snicker of Magic, which is another middle grade book. I should really put this with the other middle grade books, but for now, it's here. Then we have this beautiful, beautiful book. This is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. It sounds like it's kind of like a weird historical fiction, but I really want to read it, and everyone tells me I'm going to love it. Then we have a book that I don't know why I still have, and then we have my Eka Kurnia one collection, I guess. It's only three books, but I think he only, he or she, they only have three books in English, and I have all of them. Man Tiger was the first one that I read, and I just fell in love with it, and I just thought the writing was really creative and amazing. And so after that, I picked up this, Beauty is a Wound, which is also excellent. And then we have Kitchen Curse, which I actually got fairly recently, and I haven't read yet. I'm kind of saving it, to be honest, again, for a rainy day. I would say I'm a pretty big fan of this author's work, but I will say it's not for everyone. It is quite weird, so I think that... It's just not the kinds of books that everyone would like, but if you like weird things, I would really recommend them. Next to that, we have this beautiful book 
also quite a chunky book. This is the Norwegian version of We the Drowned. I read it in Norwegian because the original language is Danish, which is quite similar to Norwegian, so it made more sense to read it in Norwegian. This is a great historical fiction, like, adventure book. It spans over a hundred years. It's really, really good. Then I have a book by Margaret Atwood, which is also quite chunky. This is The Blind Assassin, and I haven't read it, but I'm going to. Moving further along the shelf, I have two books by Alice Hoffman. I have Practical Magic, which is like the 90s cult classic. It's really, really good. And then I have The Rules of Magic, which is a newer one. I think there's one more in this kind of like series that I haven't read yet. I don't remember the name of it. There might actually be two, but I've read both of these, really enjoyed them. If you like urban fantasy and stories about witches, I would really recommend these. This is the first three books in the Amelia Peabody series. The first book is Crocodile on the Sandbank. This is one of my favorite cozy mystery series. It just ticks a lot of boxes for me. It's historical fiction, it's cozy mystery, it has archaeology in it, there's a mummy running around, it's set in Egypt. It's wonderful. I'm pretty sure I've read two of these books and I have one to go. I think maybe this is the second one, actually. Then we have this book, which I will never stop talking about because again, I feel like this is just so underrated. The cover here says it's like Lara Croft meets Indiana Jones, which I feel like is a very good description, but I would also add it's like Lara Croft meets Indiana Jones meets The Mummy, the movie. That sums this book up very well. It's so enjoyable. It's not a literary masterpiece, I'm not gonna lie, but not everything needs to be. And this is perfect escapism and perfect like adult adventure. It's about this woman who steals a map and goes off to find treasure, basically. It's so, so enjoyable. Another book that's really enjoyable is this one. This is one of my favorite adventure books as well. This is Miss Medicine's Beetle. I, again, adore this book. It's set in the 1950s and it's about these two women who are very different who go in search of this beetle on the other side of the world. It's wonderful and it has surprising depth to it and it might make you cry at the end, but it's definitely worth it. Lastly on the shelf, we have The Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz, which I need to read. We have a short story collection, which is really good. I would really recommend it. Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo is another excellent book. And then we have Agent Zigzag by Ben McIntyre, which I haven't read, but Ben McIntyre is one of my favorite nonfiction writers, so I have this to look forward to. The main attraction on the next shelf is obviously my Agatha Christie collection, which we'll take a closer look at. But first, I just want to take out these books at the top here. I just put books where they fit and... <laughs> There was space here, so I put some stuff here. This is a book that I haven't read yet, but I love the cover. We have Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, which I've been saving <laughs> forever because I didn't want to run out of Celeste Ng to read, but she's coming out with a new novel very soon, actually, so I should get around to reading this. This is Going to Hurt by Adam Kay is one of my favorite memoirs. And then this, I don't know what this is. Oh yeah, this is also an Agatha Christie novel, which I couldn't fit here apparently. I don't have all of Agatha Christie's works, but I have a lot of them. I have a lot of the books in the Poor Raw series. I have some books in the Miss Marple series. I have some of her standalones, like And Then There Were None, which is one of my favorite mystery novels ever. This is actually a mystery novel I feel like you could easily reread, even though you know how it ends, and it would still be as good. I really like these covers as well. I like this kind of cover design where it's like illustrations on the cover and for some reason I have these in like some taller versions and then some of the shorter ones. I would like to have them all in the same height but I feel like it's not that important so I just keep the ones that I have. I also have this book which is actually by Sophie Hanna which is the person who was like taking over the Poirot series. I haven't read this. I'm scared to read it, to be honest, but I do have it, so maybe one day 
I'll read it. I love Agatha Christie though. I'm probably always gonna love her. I think her mysteries are really clever and well written and I've actually read almost all of her books but I read them when I was quite young. So now I'm sort of rereading them because I've forgotten a lot of them and it's just a joy. I have managed to cram some more books on the shelf though. We have this beautiful book. This is one of my favorite covers that I own. It's like a naked hardcover and it's just a beautiful book. This is The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night by Jen Campbell, who is also a booktuber. I would really recommend this. It's very good. We have The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel, which I haven't read. We have one of my favorite memoirs. This is Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Doughty. This is one of my many books about death, which is a topic for some reason, I'm very, very interested in and I love reading about. Then we have another memoir, which is also really, really good. We have a nonfiction book. <laughs> There's so many different things on these shelves. This is a nonfiction book about the brain, which is really good. And then I have my books by Maya Linda. I have these in Norwegian because this author is Norwegian, but the most famous of her works is probably this one. This is The History of Bees. All of these books are in her Climate Quartet series, and these are some of my favorite books. I think it's really cool when authors write about the environment in this kind of way, where it's kind of dystopian, but also kind of not, and it has a very human perspective. And I would recommend all of these books because they're excellent. And the fourth and final one is actually coming out in about a month or so, which is very exciting. The next shelf is a bit of a mess, which if you've seen the other parts of the bookshelf tour so far, you'll know that all of the parts that are covered by these doors are always super messy. I don't know why, I just... well, I do know why. I don't see it as often, so I just put things here and then I just kind of forget what it looks like. At the top here, we have two unread nonfiction books that I really want to read, The Falcon Thief and Endurance. Then I have some graphic novels, some nonfiction, fiction, nonfiction, all kinds of things. And then at the very, like, this part of the shelf, I have all of my poetry. And I have quite a pretty good collection, actually. The graphic novels that I have here, though, are some of my favorites. I have some very, like, thin ones at the end here, which I haven't read. But I'm going to, we have Sheets by Brenna Thumler, which is an excellent, excellent standalone graphic novel. I prefer standalone graphic novels. I don't really want to read series that much. And so I'm always looking for standalones. And this is one that I found, which is really, really sweet. Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell is also a very sweet book and very autumn appropriate. It's really, really fun. It's filled with food and friendship and like autumnal colors and it's just beautiful. Then we have Mouse by Art Spiegelman, which is actually nonfiction. It's probably my favorite graphic novel that I've ever read. I think everyone should read this. It's really, really good. We have The Princess and... no, The Prince and the Dressmaker, sorry. This is also really sweet. I read this and I liked it, but I didn't love it, but I kind of just want to keep it, so that's why it's still here. Then we have The Sun Does Shine, which is a memoir. It's really, really good. It's about a guy who was stuck on death row for something he didn't do. We have Terra Nullius, which is a dystopian book that's very, very good and kind of surprising and weird. We have Erebus by Michael Palin. It's so annoying that this keeps like falling over. <laughs> but we have this book, which has an excellent cover. It's about this ship and I'm interested in that for some reason. So I really want to read it. We have a book by Sarah Winman, which is excellent. I would really recommend it. We have a super weird book called Strange Heart Beating, which I don't know if I would recommend, but it's weird if you like weird books. Then we have Invisible Women, which is a book I would recommend everyone read. This is all about how the world has been created for the average standard man and not for women and not for men who are not the standard man. It's very eye-opening, but it's also like enraging. <laughs> so just be prepared to be mad when you read this. A Rising Man I haven't read, but I want to. This I have read. It's really good. I think I got this from the Women's Prize for Fiction one year. Then we have this book by Stephen Hawking, which I haven't read yet. We have this book, which is like a fantasy 
novella type thing. It's the first in a series. Then we have some books up here, which I guess I'll just show you to get them out of the way. This is a book about the universe. Technically, not the universe, but our solar system, which is in the universe. We have this little book, which is super, super sweet. This is like a comic strip type book. If you don't follow this like artist on Instagram, I would really recommend it. And I would also recommend this book if you need like something to brighten your day. Then we have this book, which I still haven't read and I need to read. And the rest of the shelf is just all of my poetry books. And as you can see, I quite enjoy poetry and I have <laughs> quite a lot of these. I'm just gonna show you the ones that are my favorites because if not, <laughs> we will be here all day. One of my favorite collections that I have here is this one. This is Sappho. Sappho is the author. The, I guess the title of it is also Sappho. These are ancient poems that have only survived in parts and for poetry that has only survived in parts, this is absolutely amazing. There are actually some of these that I also just wanted to show you because they have beautiful covers. I also love the title of this one. Really like this one as well. This one has a great cover. I feel like with poetry, it takes quite a lot to impress me. So I have read a lot of them and I like a lot of these, but only some of them are my favorites. This is one of my favorites. This is 20 Love Poems and a Song of Despair by Pablo Neruda. It's quite well known, so there's no surprise there. This has a super weird and excellent cover. This is a really good one as well, again. Beautiful cover. We have Milk and Honey by Ruthie Kaur, which I actually really like. I know some people feel like this is very overrated, but I really like it. Then we have this one, which I've never heard anyone else talk about. This is Wishing for Birds by Elizabeth Hewer. This is one of my favorite poetry collections, and when I want to reread poetry, this is one of the ones that I like take out of my shelves and I reread. If you want to cry and have your heart broken, you should really read this one. This is Undying, a love story by Michelle Faber. This is absolutely devastating, but it's so, so beautiful. And there's one poem in particular here that I've reread like a million times. Then we have this poetry collection, which I also never hear anyone talk about. This is Teaching My Mother How to Give Birth by Warson Shire. This is amazing and I would highly, highly recommend it. It's very short, but it's just absolutely beautiful. Then we have what We Buried by Caitlin Steele, which is excellent. And then I just have these, like, books by Shel Silverstein, who wrote, like, children's poems. And then I have the zine by Lena Norms, which is excellent, but I don't think you can get it anymore, but it's absolutely beautiful, and I'm really glad I got a copy that I can keep. On the last shelf, I've just crammed as much as humanly possible. We have, oh, this is really, like, tight. We have this book, which I want to read. It's like an adventure story. This book, which is quite old, but I just, I don't know. I looked it up and I wanted to read it. This, which I still haven't read and everyone tells me I need to read and I'm going to one day, hopefully. Then we have this beautiful, beautiful cover. This is Witches Steeped in Gold, which I got because I love stories about witches, but then I've heard kind of mixed things about it, but I am gonna give it a go one day when I feel like it. We have A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith, which is like a modern classic. When I Hit You by Mina Kondosmi, which is excellent. Then I just have some like random books. This book, which I need to read. This book, which I've read. This has a beautiful cover as well. Haven't read this one though. This one is a book I wanna read. Then we have Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, which is one of my favorite memoirs. This is really funny, but heartfelt and surprisingly well written. I don't know what I had expected with this, but it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Then we have this by John Green. Then we have this stack. At the top here, we have All That Remains by Sue Black, which is another one of my books about death. This is an excellent, excellent one. It's so, so good. It's about like forensic anthropology, I think it is. She's like a professor of it and it's all about her career and the cases that she's worked on. Very, very good. We have this, which I don't remember anything about, but I'm assuming I want to read. 
We have this historical fiction book, which I've saved for when I'm in the mood for something that looks like this. <laughs> we have Coraline by Neil Gaiman, which I'm sure you've heard of. Then we have this book, which is actually a book I want to reread. This is maybe what you would call a modern classic here in Norway. It translates to The Orange Girl. I read this in school, I think, if I remember correctly, and I don't remember if I liked it or not. I can't remember anything from it, but I want to reread it because I wonder what I would think of it now. I can also see that I've hidden some books in the back here as well, but they're just some Norwegian books that, to be honest, are not all that interesting. We have another death book. We have Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs by Caitlin Doughty. This is a great and surprisingly fun and funny book, which is a weird thing to say about like death books, but it's really good. Then we have this, which is Unnatural Causes by Dr. Richard Shepard. This is also one of my favorite books about death. This is like a memoir slash science book. It's kind of like these ones are in the same type of genre and both of them are great. Then we have some of the Witcher books, which I have, but I haven't read, but I will one day. Then we have this book, which I don't remember much about, but I think... Yeah, I haven't read this one, but I want to read it. We have Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. We have Savage Instinct. And then we have this little book, which is a nonfiction book about plastic. And then we just have all of these, like, history biography books. The books by Antonia Fraser, like these four books, I haven't read any of them, but I really want to. And the reason I got them is because I read all of these books, and these books are excellent, excellent historical books. All of them are by the author Robert K. Massey, and I've actually managed to read all of these somehow and enjoyed all of them. We have one book about Catherine the Great, we have Peter the Great, the Romanovs, and Nicholas and Alexandra. These are, you know, about Russian history, and it's fascinating. And if you want to learn more about it and you want to read something that's not too difficult and too challenging, these books are highly recommended, at least for me. I am going to read these books by Antonia Fraser at some point when I'm in the mood to dive into like history again. I love reading about history, but I need to be like in the mindset to read <laughs> chunky books that have a lot of information in them. But that was the last shelf on this part of the bookshelf tour. This, I do have another shelf under here, like I mentioned, but it just has like paper stuff and just, I don't know why, but when you're an adult, you just need a lot of papers. So I have one shelf for that. Okay, everyone, those are all the books on my third shelf. And so that's going to be it for me today. The fourth and final installment of this tour will be up at some point. Maybe I'll see you in that, but Either way, thank you very much for hanging out with me today, and I will see you soon. Bye!